Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. It's week two of our Investors Summit and Sea with a live studio audience. Yeah. We're in the middle of the ocean. We've got an amazing faculty. You're going to hear from lots of them today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Stop for a moment. Why are you listening to this show? Are you dreaming of a bigger, brighter financial future? More personal freedom to live life on your own terms? What if there was just one skill that could make it happen? There is. Sales. Robert Kiyosaki says every entrepreneur must be good at sales. It's true for investors too. Sales is how you attract money, people, and opportunities. Sales is the skill used to negotiate deals and lead your team. Sales skills are essential to success. The good news is, it's a learnable skill. The great news is, we've created a two-day interactive workshop to teach those skills to you. Make plans today to attend How to Win Funds and Influence People, Mastering the Art of Financial Selling. For dates and details, send an email to sales at realestateguysradio.com or visit realestateguysradio.com and look under events. Gain the skills you need to succeed. Email sales at realestateguysradio.com or look under the events tab at realestateguysradio.com. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys Radio Show. I'm your host, Robert Helms, with me as usual co host, financial strategist, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. And I can't believe I still have my voice in week two of the Investors Summit at Sea with a live studio audience. Oh my gosh, if you heard last week's show, we were just getting started and now we're nearing the end of this amazing journey together. What do you think, Russell Gray? Well, I think it's great. It's always fun to see how the event evolves. You know, we put all these people in this environment, we start rubbing our brains against each other's brains and sharing ideas and information and then it's the dots start to connect. And the questions are a lot better at the end, and you can see the light bulbs going off for people as we're transitioning from some of the theoretical stuff we talk about. We're getting into how do we actually go home and implement this stuff? How do we take what we've done, this education, and then convert it into effective action? So we've got one more session left uh, before we get off the ship, and we're going to be talking about uh, exactly that, you know, best ideas and action plans. And that's always the highlight, when the rubber meets the road and when the ideas turn into actions and change, change people's portfolios, change their futures, change their lives, and hopefully change the world a little bit. Now, when you come to the Investor Summit, you get a pepper on your badge. It's just a little hot chili pepper on your badge for every year you've come. So our first-time summiteers just have a single pepper. First-time summiteers, let's hear from you. Yeah. Excellent. And next year, they can come back as alumni. Our first faculty member today has six peppers on his badge. Let's say hello to the amazing Peter Schiff. Good to have you sailing with us again, Peter. How's everything? Everything's good. It's uh, fun to be sailing again. Indeed it is. And this time we sailed to a place that is near and dear to you. We stopped in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and you had a bunch of us over at your house. I did. I did. Yeah, you know, I live in Puerto Rico, not in San Juan. I live in a town called Dorado, and uh, I had a bunch of the summiteers come uh, to that area. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time because, you know, we didn't get to Puerto Rico until late in the day. And I think people also wanted to see a little bit of old San Juan. So by the time they got to my town, it was nearing sunset. So they didn't really get to, I think, take in all the beauty of the resort area where I live. I live in a Ritz-Carlton Reserve uh, in Dorado Beach. It's a big gated community with a lot of families. Uh, and I think it's a great place for people who do want to relocate from the U.S. to Puerto Rico to take advantage of some of the you know rather extraordinary tax breaks there. Some people think that Going to Puerto Rico, it's oh, um, it's a big sacrifice because you have to live in Puerto Rico. Well, I never looked at living in Dorado as being a sacrifice. I think it's a wonderful place to live, especially if you have children and you want them uh, to grow up in a very family-friendly environment. And we got beautiful weather, beautiful beaches, uh, lots of stuff to do. So it, it's not that it's a sacrifice. I mean, maybe it's the distance might be a little farther from some of your friends and family, but believe me, they're going to want to visit you. And there are a lot of people that live there that are you know, also new to the area, so it's very easy to, to make new friends. Now, before you moved your family to Puerto Rico, you moved one of your businesses there, and we talked a lot on the summit about Act 20 and 22. Give us the big picture on why somebody, and maybe who that person is, that it would make sense to consider a move to Puerto Rico. Well, I mean, I moved my business there in 2013, or one of them, my asset management business, Euro-Pacific Asset Management. 
And I initially did that because I saw these tax breaks that were enacted in 2012, and uh, it was a great opportunity. I was thinking about moving that business anyway. I was looking at Singapore. I was looking at Ireland uh, just to get it out of California uh, where I was getting taxed to death. But then I found out about Puerto Rico, and it was a great opportunity because I could pay a 4% corporate tax in Puerto Rico. Now, I know there are other places that you can pay a 0% corporate tax, but the difference is when you take the dividend, you're stuck with the U.S. income tax. Whereas in Puerto Rico, once you pay the 4%, you're done, right? You get the dividends out tax-free. The only uh, stipulation is you must be a Puerto Rican resident when you get the dividend. If you're not, then you have to pay the regular U.S. dividend tax, which right now federal is 24 when you throw in the Obamacare tax, and then you've got your state. So I moved my business there years before I actually moved there, which lets you accumulate the retained earnings, and you can just take all the earnings once you get there uh, and pay no tax. That has been modified in 2017 by the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Uh, what that does now is it says if you do have an offshore corporation, which would include Puerto Rico, you have to pay taxes every year uh, on the uh, undistributed uh, retained earnings. Uh, so if you do now what I did then, you would have to pay some income taxes on the money you earned in Puerto Rico unless that company is owned 50 percent by a Puerto Rican resident, in which case it's exempt from the tax entirely. So at this point, uh, you know, if you really want to maximize your tax benefits, you can't just set up a business in Puerto Rico. You need to live in Puerto Rico and run the business from there. Now, we met some folks who are doing this uh, at a very high level, and many of them come down for the half year and a day, but some have decided, no, we're going to stay full time. I know when we first talked about this, you were thinking, well, I'll spend half of the time in the States and half of the time in Puerto Rico, but what, what's your thinking now? Well, I mean, I got young kids that are going to be in school, and so if you're not going to homeschool them, if you're going to enroll them in a school, then you kind of are kind of trapped by the school year. So I'm going to be spending the majority of my time in Puerto Rico for that reason alone, but... I said, I, you know, I don't look at it as a sacrifice, like, oh, I'm stuck here. You know, I enjoy being there. Um, I mean, I have no interest in being home in Connecticut during the winter. I mean, the winters, there's no reason to be there. Um, and so I'd much rather be in Puerto Rico. I do like the summers in Connecticut and the falls and parts of spring, but obviously I can visit. I can go back and forth. But, you know, you're not stuck there. You know, part of your um, 183 days uh, you get 30 days of international travel, uh, which would be to Europe or South America. So if you spend you know, 30 days traveling internationally, those 30 days would count towards your 183. And what a lot of people don't realize is that in order to get credit for a day, you just need to be in Puerto Rico for one minute of that day. So if, I, if you're in Puerto Rico and you fly to Miami on a Monday and you fly back on a Tuesday, it doesn't count as if you've even left the island. Uh, and so if you leave for three days, chances are you're only going to lose one. So you can make a lot of short trips without eating into your 183-day your minimum. All right, excellent. How about a hand for Peter Schiff? It has been an extraordinary week, and last year on the Investors Summit, we first met these next two gentlemen, meaning they have two peppers. This year they uh, came back for the entire summit. It's Chris Martinson and Adam Taggart. It's been a great week. It's been a crazy week. All kinds of things going on. Last year, you guys popped on for a couple of days and had your big annual event. And this time, the whole week. Chris, tell us about your week at sea. This has just been fantastic. First off, the whole week, I've been uh, absorbing, learning. I've got a lot of ideas I'm going home with of things that I'm going to be putting in practice in my own life, including self-directed 401ks, talking with people about syndication deals, understanding more about how real estate can fit into my own personal life and portfolio, and really with the urge... Robert, I, I, I want to get my kids involved in this yeah. because that's that first, you know, they've got time on their side. And second, this is just such an important thing to get started on, I think, early. You know, the work that you guys do is uh, very important. And so many people are not talking about the fact that we have limited resources as a globe and we have situations brewing. Talk about the difference between a problem and a predicament. Well, it's a very important distinction because problems have solutions. Predicaments only have outcomes. So if you're facing a predicament and you're looking for a solution, what's happening is you're wasting time and effort because all it has is an intelligent response that you can bring to it. So knowing when you're facing a problem versus a predicament, very important because it means 
that you can not waste any time trying to fix something that's unfixable. Instead, you're figuring out how you're going to manage it. Now, in the crash course, which is, of course, the work that you're probably best known for, you really brought to light a lot of the things that are wrong, a lot of the predicaments, but also some ways to be thinking about that. And then uh, you guys wrote the book Prosper, and that is really about how, what, what can we do with that information? So uh, maybe share with us some of the, the distinctions that came out of this week as you had conversations with folks about that. People were very interested in, in that side of it, of course. I think this audience and our own have a lot of overlap, a lot of similarity. We're all curious, we're very open-minded, not afraid to look at things as they really are. But of course, the question comes up once you see things, you're like, well, what am I gonna do about this? And our framework says, well, there are eight forms of capital. Financial capital, very important. We start there, we often lead off with that one because everybody's interested in that. But social capital, really important. How well you know people, your uh, living capital, which is your own health, things like that. So we had a lot of very, very rich conversations across all eight forms of capital. And I think my key takeaway, though, really from this was that the millennials, you have a lot of young investors here this year, I think a critical mass. They formed their own uh, tribe, as it were, a sub-tribe, and they were really keenly interested in the message that Adam and I had to share this year because it includes the environment, it includes this larger world. And I think millennials, more than my generation, are much more keenly interested in, in the whole picture, uh, more so than I was. You know, Adam, you guys both got a chance to address just the young adults. We have about 30 or so of them on board, and we had a breakout one evening with Robert and Kim and Simon and you guys. Tell us about that. Well, that was wonderful. Um, first, it, it was just so great to see those millennials have the opportunity that you provided to them. They were able to talk to people who are incredibly accomplished um, and get the, the unvarnished insider, hey, look, if I were in your shoes when I was your age, this is what I wish I had known. And to get that from folks like Robert Kiyosaki, Simon Black, I mean, these, it's just pearls of wisdom for these kids. So I thought that was a great opportunity for them in general. Um, but to Chris's point, too, you know, I was really impressed by uh, their command of a lot of the, the issues that we talk about uh, at Peak Prosperity. Resource depletion, um, species extinction, um, lifestyle costs just you know, increasingly outpacing the ability of the average person to afford it. These are things that, that the millennial generation already knows, right? This is not news to them. One of the things that, uh, that we, we highlighted for them, which I think um, help, help encapsulate it for them, but it's important for people of all generations to understand this, is what we're witnessing right now is really sort of a, an existential battle between demographics um, where the older generation, the boomer generation, if you will, they have everything to lose if the status quo shifts. Yet the younger generations really have nothing to gain if it continues. So they're in the middle of that tension. And uh, I think that's going to be increasingly uh, defining how the generations interact as, as we go forward along the timeline here. Um, you know, the big question is going to be, um, you know, how do we resolve that? And some of these are going to be predicaments. We're just going to have to figure out how to manage it. Um, but one of the key things for these folks, these younger folks to realize is, is as much uncertainty and challenge is coming in the future, there's also another side of that coin, which is the opportunity. And they're the generation that, yes, the bad news is they're going to have to be the ones to live with these big forces as they arrive in, in full potency. Um, but they're also going to be the ones to begin to come up with the solutions. And um, you know, if you are... Uh, you know, intelligent, aware, and use the business skills that you know folks like Simon teaches at his entrepreneur camp. You're going to be, have the chance to make an awful lot of money. Well, it, and prosper in all forms of wealth, not just monetarily. Well, in all forms of wealth, that's a big distinction I want to make because the theme this year has been the future of money and wealth. We talked a mm -hmm. lot about money, currency, metal, all those fiat, all that stuff, but the wealth side. This really ties in well with your framework, the different forms of capital. I think one of the forms of capital we all experienced this week was that human capital, the social capital. In fact, we were in Puerto Rico, and one of the gentlemen was telling this story about when the power went out and how one neighbor would have this and one neighbor would have that, and they would see who had this. And Adam comes up and says to me, that's social capital. Right, the ability that they figured it out. And having a tribe, having a connection, having a, a peer group and people you can talk to because there's so much that, that may happen and our wealth is not just what's in our bank account. Our wealth is all of the forms of capital you guys talk about. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, with that, that moment where that gentleman was talking about uh, you know, how the community there really had to rally together during adversity. You know, in periods like that, um, you really begin to realize that uh, if you don't have social capital, uh, not only are you having to deal with that adversity by yourself, but if all you have is 
financial capital, you know, just the money. If you have no social relationships, you basically just painted a big target on yourself. You bet. And then, of course, emotional capital, dealing with whatever happens on an emotional level. And I think part of what we go through in a week like this, when we're thinking about possible eventualities, some positive and, and opportunistic and others, oh my gosh, is we're building some of that emotional fortitude. No, that's absolutely true. One of the things that Chris and I talk a lot about, and we really try to live this ourselves, is... Really, with peak prosperity, what we're trying to bring to people is an awareness of what's going on and then to showcase models for doing it differently and hopefully better. And I think that's a, a real common theme that I've witnessed here at uh, Summit at Sea. And one of the best examples of that, uh, that I think is, uh, is Russ. So Russ tells a great emotional capital story where we always tell people, look, best laid plans, there's no guarantee they're going to work out the way that you hope. The money may come, the money may go. You really can't control that at the end of the day, at least not with 100% control. And Russ is very honest and, and open and raw about telling about a point in his life where when 2008 arrived, he, he was not positioned well and lost a lot of his financial capital. And for a lot of people, that would destroy them. And for a lot of people, it did. But Russ had the emotional fortitude to lean into adversity, learn from it, build his knowledge capital, and then eventually turn that into the great success that we're participating in here today. It's a good point. You can learn from other people's success, but when you learn when other people went through the muck and got out of it and came mm -hmm. to the other end, our panel on resilience is all about that. Chris, that's a word you guys use a lot is resilience. Can you speak to that? Well, sure. Resilience is your ability to, to come back from adversity, some insult and has been experienced in your life, and you bounce back. And often you're not just bouncing back to where you were, but you're coming back stronger. Of all the eight forms of capital, I have to say for myself, I think emotional capital is the most important one. You, have, you could be rich in all other seven forms, but if you fall apart and you don't know how to come back, it, they, they might, you might as well not have any of them. So what do you mean by that, by you know, emotional capital? Well, really, it's your ability to know yourself very well the willingness to be vulnerable. I saw extraordinary acts of vulnerability on stage right here yesterday. Brought tears to many eyes. It was really exceptional to see that people would be willing and felt safe enough in a group of people to do that. Because really what you get with emotional capital at the end of the day is you get meaning and purpose from the connections you have with people. To do that, you have to drop your guard, which means you have to trust. So that's really extraordinary. And, and I, in my experience in normal cultural life in the United States, it's hard to find groups who are willing to do that. Drop the guard, be real, and really share what's actually true. And when I experience that, somebody's sharing something that's true, I know because it goes in. And then their experience is a shared experience because I don't have to have the same experience to learn from it. Right? So I saw some of that going on here, and it was, just, it was really it was, it was fabulous to watch. And I'm harvesting that, taking that off, and hopefully recreating that with our own tribe at, at our next seminar coming up. How about a hand for Chris Martinson and Adam Taggart, peakprosperity.com. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. More do we come back to the 16th Annual Investor Summit at Sea. Live nationwide, you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Hey, it's Robert Helms. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. I want to personally invite you to come see an amazing real estate market that combines excellent cash flow, offshore diversification, and what we affectionately call lifestyle investing. Come join me from May 25th to 28th in the beautiful country of Belize. The Real Estate Guys have been bringing investors to Belize for more than 10 years now, and our discovery trip is designed to show you the market like nobody else can. Sure, Belize is breathtakingly beautiful, the people are wonderful, and wait till you taste the food. But the real opportunity is the real estate investment potential. 2017 was the biggest year in tourism Belize has ever witnessed, and this year has started off even stronger. How does that translate to real estate investment? That's what you have to come see. There's all types of opportunity in Belize when it comes to real estate investing, including both long and short-term rentals, commercial and retail triple net properties, business opportunities, land acquisition, development, agriculture, and more. And as the only country in Latin America with English as its official language, it's easy to understand the law, property rights are strong, and contracts are in English. And in Ambergris Key, a unique situation exists where demand for rentals continues to outstrip supply, creating a compelling environment for investors. So come see for yourself. 
Join me May 25th to 28th in Ambergris Key, Belize, as we study the market, learn about the sustainable drivers, and tour lots of beautiful real estate. And like all of our field trips, there are no properties for sale during the weekend. Rather, you'll meet lots of local providers that will help educate you about the market so that you can follow up with them after the trip if the market is interesting to you. But that ball is always in your court. You'll receive their contact details, but they won't receive yours unless you give it to them. You've heard about Belize and the Real Estate Guys for all these years. Now come see what all the excitement is about. Plus, we'll have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Belize Discovery Trips. Once you register, you'll get information about our group hotel rates as well as travel details. So join me in Belize, May 25th to 28th. It's a beautiful country with lots of amazing possibilities and the only thing missing is you. Go to realestateguysradio.com under events. I look forward to seeing you in beautiful Belize. Hey, it's Ken McElroy. I listen to the Real Estate Guys and so should you. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program. We're at the 16th Annual Investor Summit at Sea with a live studio audience. <laughs> we have had so much fun this week. We have been learning together, laughing together, singing together, eating together, sleeping together. It's been crazy fun. And uh, oh my gosh, we're going to do it again before we're done. We'll tell you how you can find out about next year's summit. Joining us. Again, let's say hello to Brad. Some rock the apartment. King, how are you, Brad? I'm good. and had a great week so far. You know, last year was your first time, and you don't know what to expect your first time. But this time coming back, tell us about some of the distinctions of your week. Well, last time I, uh, I thought I knew what to expect uh, since I had already been here before, but it just blew me away um, with all the people that are here. I mean, there's 230 people, and there's so many different investors and different perspectives and things that that I know very little about. I mean, I'm an apartment guy, I'm a specialist, and then meeting with all these different people that are, that have so much information about so many things, it's just a mind-expanding experience for me, such a big picture event that I really don't get exposed to on a regular basis. Well, good stuff, good to have you here. Certainly some of your students here, and uh, you talked about apartments several times, all the way from uh, being on a, a panel in front of the whole room to the round table discussions. Talk about the access that folks who come have to the faculty. Yeah, I mean, every night there's dinner and uh, the, the summiteers get to have dinner uh, every night with a different faculty member. And then every day for lunch, there are round tables where they get to sign up for the faculty members that they want to connect with or learn from or talk with. And so I think that just about everybody that, I know certainly for me, anybody that probably wanted uh, to learn more about what we do with apartment investing, certainly had that opportunity. And then, oh, oh my gosh, I mean, the, the evening events with the parties and the networking, and I mean, it really starts from 8 o'clock in the morning until, you know, midnight, and, um, and then the excursions, we're all together, and we get to do things off in Puerto Rico and seeing Peter Schiff's house. I mean, imagine seeing Peter Schiff's house in Puerto Rico and then going to a place where we could all hang out in the swimming pool and just hang out and get to know each other better and connect. Uh, phenomenal experience. Good stuff. Hey, Michael Becker is back with us, and uh, good to have Becker. How are you, sir? It's good to be back. Well, tell us about your experience this time. A little different round. The faculty keeps getting bigger. You're back for year number three, I think. Is that right? Yeah, bigger, better. I discovered a talent I didn't know I had. I'm a backup singer, evidently, at the, uh, the local talent show. So How that's, about that? Uh, that's good, right? So, yeah, no, it was good. It was uh, about meeting a bunch of people. I've really, in particular, spent a bunch of time with the young adult program, you know, several of the guys hanging out. So it's been uh, been a great experience and kind of seeing the quality of people that are on the ship, especially younger people and the, um, the, where they are at such a young age, being under 25 and how accomplished they are. At this point in their lives, they're going to be set up for a very successful career. So it's pretty cool spending some time with them. A lot of folks have been here about the summit on the show for years and years, and it's a lot of time and a lot of money. And last year, we started the Young Adult Program, which is for 18 to 25-year-olds that would love to be here and love to learn and love to contribute, but don't quite have uh, the financial aptitude to be able to handle all that. And so we've got a whole bunch from this year. It's been great. And uh, it's fun, you know, uh, back to the dining room. Some nights, we put a bunch of the young adults together because we want them to create community and get to know each other. And some nights, we intersperse them throughout uh, the rest of because I know I certainly enjoyed the nights where I had some of the young adults with me. You had a table every night. Tell us about some of the uh, the experiences that you had uh, over dinner. 
Yeah, it was great. So, so multiple nights with people I've never met, which was great. You get to establish great new relationships with people. And then some nights were people that have, had, have been on the same boat with me for the last three years. So it's kind of like, uh, it's like old home. It's like coming home. I know Robert once referred to it as, it's like summer camp fully affluent. You just see these people once a year and uh, then you have, you have a good time and you kind of have the old memories and you share these experiences together. So the dinners and uh, hanging out afterwards are, are definitely my most uh, valuable thing I get out of this cruise. Well, what I reach about both, about both you guys is that we have a lot of syndicators on board, a lot of folks thinking about syndicating, raising money. And, of course, Michael, you help in two ways with that as a, a loan officer and lender, and also you do a lot of syndication. And, Brad, that's a lot of what you teach. Uh, just having the ability for people to share, whether it's in a structured class or just time off or any of that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate you guys. How about a hand for Brad Sumrock and Michael Becker? Let's say hello to a couple of other faculty members. Gentleman has been joining us now for his fourth year. This is David Sewell. How are you, sir? I'm very fine. Thank you, sir. So good to have you back. We had quite a week this week. What were your big takeaways from the week? Big takeaway for me is uh, personally, I am absolutely and totally addicted to this tribe. How about a hand for that? Period. <laughs> You know, I could take them or leave them, but I appreciate that from you. That's awesome. And uh, you got a lot of good conversations. And, of course, you're in a different part of the real estate business in terms of agricultural real estate. And some people look at that and like, why can you even do that? So tell us about some of the paradigms and some of the conversations around how folks are interested in maybe diversifying internationally or into agricultural products. The theme of offshore to freedom um, really works well. Um, it, it helps to be able to have a product on a, that's uh, the only legal drug and uh, that 400 million people drink every morning in the United States alone, never mind around the world. So it becomes fairly obvious that demand and supply work very well and the demand is, is high, very high and increasing rapidly and the supply is limited. So it's a, almost a no-brainer when it comes into the coffee business Chocolate business just about as well because uh, people like to end the day with coffee or with chocolate. They don't drink a lot of coffee at night typically, but a lot of people do imbibe in chocolate at night. So we have the best of both worlds. Coming here on a regular basis has shown me a lot of things. And I, I learn something new every time I'm here, more than one thing from the main stage generally. I also learn uh, things about myself and it's really important I think to do that and I was sitting here last year listening to the conversations and talking about the devaluation of the dollar and I'm in Panama and we still use it we use the US dollar there as one of the few countries around the world outside the US that does and my business is worldwide it's international it's coffee it's the second largest traded commodity in the world behind oil in dollar terms and I'm concerned about the dollar and Last year, I promised myself I would do something about it. I knew what I was going to do because I was taught here what to do. And did I do it? Nope. I'm sitting back here outside watching and listening. I say, David, they're telling you something here. Pay attention, listen, and do it. And we need to monetize our coffee business away from US dollars into gold. And I've been taught how to do that here. And it's just an invaluable lesson while I'm having a big pile of fun. Let's give a hand for that. <laughs> Returning for his third year, let's say hello to Kyle Wilson. Kyle, how are you? I am very good. Thank you, Robert. Great to have you back. It's been uh, kind of uh, an amazing week, and certainly you are in there and, and uh, social with everybody, holding court at dinner. Tell us about your week at sea. Yeah, it's been amazing, Robert. And I always say, you and Russell, you provide the party, right? You gather this amazing faculty that are just world class, and then everyone says, okay, I'm gonna spend some money to come to learn and grow, but also the networking, the connections that happen are unbelievable. So it's it's the part, you're hosting the party for all the rest of us, so thank you so much. You know, that's a good point in that it's an environment that you can learn, and Robert Kiyosaki talked a lot about 
learn, study, and teach. And I think that the reason we come is to get good ideas, to bounce those ideas off of each other. What I want to eventuality is those we get to know each other, have fun, and network. And that's a side benefit. We say in the first day, there's no soliciting. Don't come here pitching your deal to other people. They came here to learn. They didn't come to get pitched. And yet, affinities form and networks form. And by show of applause, if you met somebody this week you think you might do business with in the future, let us know that. A couple of great, great things have come up over the last couple of days. And our favorite thing, of course, is when we get faculty members together and they have conversations and they say what if and what that. And we did all kinds of that fun stuff this week and had our panels and so forth. So, you know, Kyle, you have uh, a couple of books on board that uh, you've published and many of your contributing authors in those books are actually here. That was pretty fun. It was like the tribe within the tribe of all the uh, all the authors. Yeah, so true. And and Robert, you're the, you're the common denominator, right? They're part of your tribe. And uh, of course, you're part of the book, and it's an amazing book and some amazing people. Yeah, good, good, good stuff. Let's give Kyle Wilson a hand. Thank you. Stay tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. More when we come back from the 16th Annual Investors Summit at Sea. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. This portion of the Real Estate Guys radio program is brought to you by International Coffee Farms, where you can own a parcel of land in your very own specialty coffee farm in Panama for as little as $15,000. Here's how it works. Deeded half-acre parcels entitled Specialty Coffee Farms in Boquete, Panama are turnkey managed professionally on your behalf by a team of local experts. Sustainable average income is estimated at 12% and cash flow can begin within 12 to 15 months from the date of your parcel ownership. International Coffee Farms' mission is to own and operate specialty coffee farms that are economically, environmentally, and socially sustainable. As part of this mission, 20% of the gross profits of each farm is committed to a socially sustainable fund to improve the lives of the Panamanian coffee farm workers and their families. International Coffee Farms currently owns and operates nine specialty coffee farms with half-acre parcels available for immediate ownership. To find out how you can become a coffee farm owner in Paquete, Panama, email coffee at realestateguysradio.com. That's coffee at realestateguysradio.com. Have you decided to invest in real estate but find you don't have the time to evaluate your options? Successful real estate investing takes expertise, market knowledge, and time. Many affluent investors with busy schedules choose to rely on real estate experts. They partner with proven teams with a successful track record. Four Peaks Capital Partners have created a system which allows accredited investors an opportunity to invest in undervalued assets. If you're an accredited investor looking for passive income, call 877-5-INCOME. That's 877-5-INCOME or visit Private Income investments.com. Imagine listening in as two real-world apartment investing experts share their best ideas and strategies. Well, now you can. When you listen to the Old Capital Podcast featuring Michael Becker and Paul Peebles, you'll learn from two seasoned pros who funded and syndicated hundreds of millions of dollars in apartments. Each episode is chock full of expert advice, real-world wisdom, and interviews with real-life investors. For details about how you can listen to the Old Capital Podcast, send an email to ocp at realestateguysradio.com. When you do, we'll send you Michael Becker's personal due diligence checklist free of charge. Email your request to OCP, Old Capital Podcast, at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, I'm Mark Victor Hans. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. If you want to expand your consciousness, expand your wealth, expand your future, and have more delight and excite in your future than in your past, keep listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. Broadcasting from the 16th Annual Investor Summit at Sea this week, we've got lots more faculty on the way. Before we're done today, we'll tell you how to sign up for next year's summit. The first two days of which took place on land, we called it the future of money and wealth. So sorry if you missed it, but the good news is we recorded the whole thing on video and it's available in pre-order right now. Just go to futureofmoneyandwealth.com. Before we get back to more interviews with our faculty, it's time to play real estate trivia. Your chance to win a prize by knowing today's real estate trivia question, which has something to do with our theme this week. As soon as you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name, the answer to the question, 
and your physical mailing address, because if you're the winner, we're going to send you an autographed copy of Chris Martinson and Adam Taggart's great book, Prosper. Last week on the show, it was part one of our 2018 Investor Summit at Sea. If you didn't hear that show with Robert and Kim Kiyosaki, G. Everett Griffin, and more, go back and do that for sure. We asked this, who discovered Puerto Rico? Well, Puerto Rico was actually discovered in 1493 by Christopher Columbus, one year after he discovered the Americas. By the way, he originally named it San Juan Batista, after John the Baptist. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. Which country in the world builds the most ships? We're sailing on a beautiful big cruise ship. Most of the ships in the world are built in a handful of countries. And I will warn you that the title has changed over time. So we're going to ask specifically who built the most ships in 2017. Which country built the most ships last year? If you think you know or just want to take a guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Be sure to include your name, the answer to the question, and your mailing address so we can send you an autographed copy of Prosper by Chris Martinson and Adam Taggart. That's today's real estate trivia question. It is the 2018 Investor Summit at Sea. Oh my gosh, we've got a live audience. having a ton of fun. Our theme this year was the future of money and wealth. We spent a couple days on land and for the first time ever invited folks to just attend the two land days. If you didn't get a chance to uh, witness that, it was extraordinary. Lots of speakers, lots of fun, nearly 400 people in the room. And uh, both of these gentlemen talked a lot about the future of money because they take a look past and look at uh, what money has been for a long time. So we're going to take a quick minute here to talk about the precious metals. First, from Jefferson Companies and the editor of the Gold Newsletter, let's say hello to Brian London. How are you, sir? I am great. Great to be here again. Welcome back. Three years ago, you came just for the land day. Last year, you came and you and your wife spent the week with us, and, uh, and you're back. Tell us uh, the distinctions that uh, came up for you this week. Well, it, last year we were really blown away. You know, I've been in the conference business for 30 some odd years and, and I've seen it all, seen a lot of great content, we produce a lot of great ton content at our show, but I was really blown away at the level, the quality of speakers you have, the quality of audience interaction, the quality of the audience itself, and this whole experience, how you can mingle with the speakers, how you can meet, mingle with each other. The, the audience are some of the best and smartest people you'll, you'll ever see and very accomplished. So you learn so much just on the ship, going to dinner, meeting at the social events. So I was blown away by that last year. And this year, I come on board and we have a head start. We already know about 50 people very well. And it's just meeting more people. You renew relationships. And you get so much further down the road with them. Uh, with that head start. So it's something I'm looking forward to coming to year after year or as long as you'll let me. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you do. And there's a couple of things there. You mentioned the conference. You've also uh, been uh, very involved with the medals. Talk about uh, where gold fits into this whole discussion of the future of money and wealth. Well, you have, uh, you really, it's really commendable that you and Russ are kind of cross-pollinating this audience. You focus on real estate, but you realize that the bigger picture affects not only real estate, but other real investments like gold. And one of the big picture issues that we've been talking about and examining this week is the fact that some level of dollar depreciation is inevitable. It has to happen because the debt is so large, it cannot be managed without some depreciation in the currency. And the unique thing about this situation is for the first time in human history, it's actually a global event. Most other, if not all other, developed economies are in the same boat. They've overspent, they've created huge amounts of debt. We are just coming off a zero interest rate environment across the entire globe. And every developed economy is in the same boat, and every developed economy has to depreciate their currencies to lessen the, the impact, the cost of their debt. So when that happens, what's left as the, the remaining standard? In our view, it's the thing that has been the standard of wealth, the standard against which all currencies have been gauged against for 4,000 years of human history, and that's gold. Now, Dana Samuelson is with us again, and uh, Dana, you came first uh, first time last year, and of course what you do is you are a precious metals dealer. Um, can you piggyback on that? You're seeing what's happening with folks who are interested, and I know this, uh, this week, 
you did a bunch of introductory roundtables and introduced many people to that. If you had an uh, introductory roundtable or sat at dinner with Dana and had a good time learning about gold and silver, uh, round of applause. <laughs> Tell us what folks need to know about how they can participate in precious metals. Buying and selling gold these days is, is pretty easy. Uh, there are a number of respectable and reliable dealers around the country you can do business with. You can also buy gold in, on a paper form with uh, ETFs like GLD or SLV. Uh, you can buy gold or trade gold by proxy through mining shares, which Brian London is an expert in. So there's different vehicles that you can do, uh, do this through. Uh, I've specialize in the physical market myself. I deal in modern bullion coins and classic old US and world coins that are, were currency back in the day when gold really was money and we had a gold standard, which we no longer have. Increasingly now that uh, we're in a situation where debt has just exploded and we're coming off of a, the cheapest money cycle in world history and inflation rates are starting to perk back up, uh, the gold price, which had rocketed higher following the 2008 financial crisis, doubled in price and has corrected back down, is starting to perk back up again. And we're seeing a uh, U.S. fiscal situation where the debt is going to increase from $21 trillion to $22 trillion to $23 trillion. This is going to push gold higher, naturally, I think. And people are interested in participating again, where the last couple of years, there's been less of an inclination to do so because the economy's been strengthening and the stock market's been very, very strong, but that's all starting to change now. Well, now this is your second year with us, and again, first year is kind of taking it all in, but uh, second year, we've had some opportunity to interact in between. Tell us what it's like coming back. Well, it is fantastic to be here. I have never met a more unassuming group of overachievers in my life. Uh, being able to interact with the faculty has been wonderful. Uh, meeting and getting to know people like Robert Kiyosaki and Edward Griffin have been, has been fantastic. But the breadth and depth of the playing field of your attendees is amazing. You have many, many quiet business leaders in your audience here who are amazing uh, individuals in their specialties, from apartment investing to residential home investing to uh, assisted living investing, uh, syndication. I mean, it's just amazing the people that you have here, and uh, they're all so wonderful. They're humble, they're brilliant, and they're giving. And it's just an amazing, amazing group of people to be among with and have time with. Last year, when I got off the boat, I had the best spring in my step that I've had in years, and this has only reinforced that, uh, but not just in a uh, double, it's, it's like exponentially. Good stuff. How about a hand for Brian London and Dana Samuelson? <laughs> the turn to the Real Estate Guys radio program, Horn, we come back. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Forbes rated Memphis the best cash flow market in the nation. And our good friend Terry Kerr at Mid-South Homebuyers has been the premier turnkey rental property provider in Memphis for over 13 years. With an A-plus rating for the Better Business Bureau, Terry has renovated over 750 houses. Real Estate Guys listeners have snapped up hundreds. Discover what these satisfied investors already know. Mid-South's properties are completely renovated with a one-year warranty and a lifelong rental guarantee. They're affordable, well-managed, and easy to own. Perfect for beginning investors and veterans alike. Get in on the action. Contact Terry and his team via email at midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Patrick Donahoe of Paradigm Life. Over the last few years, I've had the privilege of sharing the services of Paradigm Life with you loyal Real Estate Guys Radio listeners through our website, www.beerbank.com, and also on the annual Investor Summit at Sea. Subsequently, we have seen a variety of financial situations across the socioeconomic spectrum and how everyone, regardless of their situation, would improve their financial lives by following the system we specialize in. As a result of this experience, we have created an online e-learning system so anyone without obligation can learn about the infinite banking concept. This free e-learning program is found on our website, www.beerbank.com. So check it out today. The website again is www.beerbank.com. 
Hi, this is Doug Casey, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. There's a bunch of people in our live studio audience. That's because it is our second uh, broadcast from the Investor Summit at Sea. Every year we get together with an amazing group of smart and intelligent and good-looking real estate investors. And the only thing different about you guys than a week ago is you're all about 10 pounds heavier. So good job. We've got amazing food. It's been absolutely incredible. Back for her second year. Let's say hello to Kathy Fecky. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Hello. Wonderful. Great to have you here. Uh, on the first uh, part of the event, before we even got on the ship, we had the future of money and wealth, and we asked you to kind of give a little keynote talk about uh, just some of the things you see out there. And we're looking at the real estate market in context of the future of money and wealth. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that the right advice can change everything. And and it was it was a little, it's always a little bit scary to hear what the reality of things, and you don't get that in most places. You do get that on your show and at definitely at Summit at Sea. Uh, but the, the most important thing to realize is that back in 2008, you could have shorted the market. You could have made a lot of money. Many of our investors, your investors, were, were, were buying properties in Texas where there wasn't the crash, and you could have saved your assets if you knew what was coming. And that's what you provide. It helped me to hear it again, some of the, some of the massive changes. The, the scarier stuff that came up this time was the lack of resources, water, food. And, and so if you know that, if you know that we're moving into an environment where there could be really a serious water and food issues, don't you want to buy land? And so it, it reinforced some of the things that we're doing at Real Wealth Network, which is investing like you out of the country where we don't have to worry uh, so much about a housing crash or a stock market crash or d the dollar decline in the U.S. if you've, if you've diversified a little bit. And so we, we've worked together investing in, in land in Costa Rica that's growing food, that has clean water. A lot of you may not even know this, Ohio has some of the cleanest water in the U.S. and it's some of the cheapest, highest cash flowing property. There's farmland in the U.S. that's cheap today. So there's things that you can do if you know, if you get the information. So it's always a pleasure. Well, it's great to have you back <laughs> this year. You brought not only one of your daughters, Krista, who came last year, but your other daughter. Talk about what it's like not only having your kids on board, but the interaction with the other young adults. I am absolutely blown away by the young people. I have learned so much from the young people here, and it gives me so much confidence in our future. I was sitting last night with about 10 millennials who are, are, are absolutely doing amazing things like Nick, who I've had on my show and I met here last year. He's done 30 land flips in the last year. It's incredible. And another young guy, 22 years old, who is buying land and leasing it uh, to solar companies or something <laughs> in Nevada. It's incredible. He's 22. And so I suggest next year that you get some of those kids on a panel because they are doing amazing things. But to have my daughters hanging out with them to, to learn. And it, my 18-year-old said, Mom, I just, we don't, we're not meeting these kind of guys in the frats at San Diego State. I don't know. That's what she said. So she's well having a great said. time. <laughs> How about I have for Kathy Fecky? <laughs> All right, rounding it up, the man that we call the godfather of real estate. He has 16 peppers on his badge. This is Bob Helms. Godfather, another year under your belt. What do you think? Wow. I, like Kathy, am very impressed with the information, the energy, and the knowledge that I saw in a lot of the young people here. Last night, I had dinner with a young man from Europe, and I don't really know exactly how old he is, but his conversation, his sophistication, his understanding of some of the political issues there blew me away. That isn't why he came to learn about that. He already knew about that part. But what we're seeing, I think, yes, I've, I've been doing this for 16 years, and it's changed quite a bit. And yes, it's better. Why is it better? Because we've got more of us, more participation and much more variety. Um, we've got people from so many disciplines and we have people who have been here for several years and we've seen them. David Sewell comes to mind instantly from the beginning with the concept to where they are today, providing amazing opportunities, stable business, and he keeps coming back. I'm not astounded. We've, that's one of the things we've seen, of course, for many years is that 
we haven't quite announced the new information yet, but here's what I'll show you, or I promise you. Most of you are going to sign up, probably at least half, without knowing who's coming and where we're going and what the exact date is. Oh, wait a minute, I'm wrong. We will know what the exact date is. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm, I'm uh, really encouraged. It's huge fun for me personally. The only disappointment I have is that I haven't met all of you yet. Now, I've put some energy into that. I've tried to because that's what I like to do. So those of you who have not had a chance to say hello to me, don't go away. Engage me, please, and indulge me because I'd like to know who you are, why you're here, and how you heard about the real estate guys. They're, they're going to come back just to hear you on that electric guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. How about a hand for the godfather of real estate, Bob Helms? If you want to join us next year, don't miss the boat. Go to InvestorsSummitAtSea.com. There are the dates and the sailing, and you can reserve your spot right now. We can't wait to see you next year on the 2019 Investor Summit at Sea. Until then, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by... Paradigm Life, powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at BeYourBank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.